Hey everyone, good morning. Happy Monday. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show where the Teach Better team gets to join you live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. Jeff and I are here, coffee in hand. I hate to say it, but I feel like my coffee has like a lot of extra sugar in it because it's just one of those days. I got a Starbucks coffee being all fancy, but it tastes like beer sugar. I don't know that there's actually coffee in here. It's just like Splenda. But anywho, that feels like it'll add to a really great conversation we'll be having with, uh, you know, my favorite boss of all time. So we'll be right back. Hey everyone, good morning. Jeff Gargas in the house. Jeff, how are you? I'm good. How are you other than apparently like hopped up on sugar? I'm good. I what just it, What what okay. is why so much cuz a lot don't you oftentimes drink your coffee black? Well, so if I get it from if I make coffee in my house, it's black. Black coffee, and I like black coffee. And, and then a, when I go to Starbucks, I get like a fancy drink. And oh, I you get like a latte. Okay. Well, I usually do a vanilla latte. But today I was like, hey, I I am going to be really cool. I have a freebie drink option. <laughs> I'm going to order something off the menu I've never had. So I ordered something. And let's put it this way. I don't think there's coffee in it. I what think get? syrup. Okay. First off, can I just note it's delicious. <laughs> What'd you get? A caramel brulee latte. Okay. Well, yeah. So, like, well, I mean, like, to go from like a typically drinking a black coffee to something like that, like, that's a lot. Well, because one, it's it's espresso, so it's a different. It's not as, for lack of a better term, harsh as like and bold as regular like a black coffee would be. Wait, hold on though. I drink I drink espresso at my house, black. That's do you what brew I brew it. Like, do you do it all? Do yeah. Because you, you get the full. Do you tap? They get the tap and everything. The whole thing. Okay. Yeah. So, so I don't okay, drink so, a cup of black coffee very often. I drink, I drink espresso. my espresso okay, or I get is, a latte from like out. Gotcha. Okay. That makes more sense because it's going from black coffee to something sweet is weird. People who drink mm -hmm. black coffee typically don't go. And maybe I'm wrong, but like from my experience, but mm -hmm. yeah, but that's, there's a lot of sugar in there. Like, and it's also creamy. It's with the milk and there's probably, what is that? A grande? There's probably two or three pumps of, of syrup in there. I think that if you wanted to see if you could have a heart attack in January, you should try one of these. <laughs> okay. okay. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm drinking. Um, this is actually, this is brewed here, but it's actually a, um, it's Dunkin' Donuts cin cinnamon, something or other cinnamon, cinnamania. Well, I think like it's called pod. cinnamania. Yeah. Pod. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, yeah, that's what we've got here. An old curry. That's like just holding on fighting its last breaths. Um, and I'm just, what is every now and then it like doesn't work and we're like, oh, is today the day? Because we've had it for like seven <laughs> years and then it comes back through. And we're like, I love yeah, it. it's basically oh. the John McClane of of Keurigs is what I think it is. So just you, it doesn't die easily. Friends, let us know what you are drinking in the <laughs> comments. If you went like coffee, orange juice, tea, let us know. We love hearing about. But if any of you need permission to do like a coffee run, I'm officially your person giving you permission that today is the day to do a coffee run. Um, and we can just be in a coffee run together, post it on your social media and tag me and let's, we can do a morning teach better family cheers, or it maybe need to pick me up mid afternoon. Like we could still do a cheers then too. So um, yeah, good stuff going on already. It's Monday. Jeff, did you have a, a decent weekend? I did. We had a, we had a good weekend, relaxing mm -hmm. weekend. Nothing yeah, just with the too. family, did some cleaning, some hanging out, but just family stuff. So okay. it was good, which I'll, I'll take. I will take. We did we did some planning. So actually, what it was relaxing, but like except for a little bit because we're planning our Disney trip because the kids found out at Christmas that we're going to Disney next month. Um, and so now we're in the like, okay, we've got the maps that dad prints out and we got to like figure out where we're going and what we got to do. So we're looking at like all the attractions and stuff, seeing which ones they want to do. Yes. Um, and what in and, and what we can do, and because there's some that you need to like reserve, and some you have yeah. to like plan to reserve in the morning. It's like a lot. It's, it's way too much 
planning and strategy and stress for how expensive it is. Okay, but I'm sure that there are people here that can just like send you their itineraries of Disney trips that they did. So before we get too far into this, like remind us again, the age of your kids so that our community can just like email you like, here's the perfect itinerary. Don't even pretend. Nine and a half and 12. So fourth grade and then uh, what, sixth grade. Um, It's been interesting. So we actually worked with briefly with a like a Disney specialist that was referred by friends who they loved and spoke extremely highly of her. I met with her and I kind of felt it, but I didn't know if I was wrong. And I like laid out, I'm like, here's everything I've looked at. Here's what I've planned out. Here's what I'm thinking. And she literally says, Mr. Gargas, I don't think you need me. Oh. And I said, oh, okay. Like, cause they don't like, I realized like they're really just for the people that don't know how to Google, I guess. I don't know. Like, well, or don't have the time resources. I mean, like it, there's there's kind of it's kind of like a wedding planner like there's a time and place and the right type of people yes but and it people makes sense. Need it. for for yeah. us it's, uh, just the way my brain brain works it doesn't make sense for anyone else it's really cool because they're free most of them are because they get paid by disney which is nice so we we did go through her for the payment so she gets her commission but i think we're probably the easiest one she's ever had to deal with that's cool I like that. you do have an itinerary use i will definitely take that because i have notes of like when i've seen people on facebook like posting that i've went recently and they're like this was the best ride ever i'm like Make a note that Melissa said that's the best ride ever. And right. That's so good. We'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting. Well, I like yeah, that. So if we, I'm ever... we did a little bit of that this weekend. Yeah. And even if when I'm like traveling to a new place, if I post on social being like, hey, I'm randomly going to like, I don't know, mm-hmm. Burlington, Vermont. Anyone ever been there? What do you like? What's the restaurant to try? Like, it's just nice to have people that have experienced a little bit of something. Who have no stake in it or anything. Right. And just They're just they're sharing to try to help. Yeah. Because totally. we get the auto stuff. So love it. What did you how was your weekend? What did you did you do any work that you did? I don't like that smile tells me that maybe you did. <laughs> What'd you do? Okay, hold on. Okay. So I wasn't gonna tell you what I was doing this weekend. I feel like I set myself <laughs> up for failure because okay, hold on. friends, you know when you know how to do something, so you don't want to go through the hoops. To, to get it done because you know how to do it fast, efficiently, and like then it'll be finished. And I have an idea. You almost, I know where you're going now. You almost want to like apologize later versus ask for permission to do it differently. That's what I did this weekend. So I don't know for many of you who know this, we have our Teach Better Academy and we've been putting courses there since 2015. Um, but over the last few years, we've really ramped up like tons and tons and tons of courses. And we have a process, right? There's like a checklist and people have to approve stuff and there's even like meetings that have to happen to make sure that the that the content's aligned to teach better values and there's no spelling mistakes, like all those things. But that wasn't my vibe this week. <laughs> what did wanted... you do? Just record a course this weekend? I totally just recorded. I just done. <laughs> like my course is done. I have two courses I wanted to put out to our community. There are trainings that we even talked about on the Teach Better Today show that either either our school districts have asked for and we've been doing recently or topics have come up in listener questions. I'm like, guys, we have, we already have the content out about this. Someone just needs to sit in front of a camera and just like bust it out. And I just had like time. So I did like, you do I busted out a course SBG standards based grading. Did. Is that what you did? Yeah. You did. Mm-hmm. Nice. Cause we have a couple and in there, but they, they are older and we needed an update. We talked about that. So that must yeah. have, and you've yeah, been doing like, a lot of work with quite a few districts yeah, with, full around trans- that. So Full transparency. If you've taken our standard based grading course in the past, like cool. Uh, but this one has way more resources. <laughs> it's way better. Um, there's an activity that I think is like bar none, the best type of activity to start with any staff anywhere um, to at least continue the conversation, whether you're two years into the process or just starting the conversation. Uh, this is a great place to kind of ease minds. So yeah, I just, I, I did that one and I'm going to do the formative one too. Cause people have been asking, oh, they want to know how yeah, to do, do a lot of that. Yep. Formative yeah. assessment better. So okay. like, so, I mean, I'm happy to do a training on it obviously, but go take a free course. Let me, let me ask you. Um, I didn't follow any instructions. I just did it. Yeah. So and that's so I'm curious. Like, that. are you doing all the editing too? Cause normally that would be a task that gets assigned and like Josh or myself usually do the editing. So, and then like, and uh, hold on, I'm not done. You, you um, brought this on yourself by bringing this up. So now I need to know, like, do you know how to publish the course no, on the I platform? Have no idea. Okay. Nope. No clue. Nope. <laughs> See, so, so we're just going to expect like a ping with like, Hey, here's a, a bunch of videos. Yeah, nothing's live because I don't actually know 
there's a reason people don't tell me everything because then I would, it would have been live. I would have been like, guys, new course on the Academy without even asking. Um, I only know how to do like 80% of it. So I recorded the videos. I did edit, but I'm going to have Josh like approve it because he's in charge of all that. And I didn't want to like not have his eyes on you all the mistakes I made. You don't want to upset Josh with Stamper. Never. Oh, oh man. I did all the marketing. Rachel already approved all the marketing for it. Um, <laughs> When's and it I supposed did, to launch? I did the intro and the outro. I don't know. Like maybe, I don't know, tomorrow. I don't think so. But like <laughs> sometimes. Tomorrow. Hey, Josh, it's tomorrow, buddy. Uh, no, like, like within the month, like within the next few weeks. I like we'll like hey, get I'm in. Eyes I'm on. in. Here's my you theory. Know, there was a, my, Okay, go ahead. Here's my theory is that usually we need a big team of people to like review content to make sure it's teach better, like aligned and to make sure there's no spelling mistakes. The slides that we use this presentation were technically co-created with Katie and Chad months ago. So you just used all the, you used straight from the training then basically. Yeah. I literally just did our training. I just put it in a free course. So there wasn't much like content to create. It was just the the facilitation of it that I did. Gotcha. So that was easy. Well, Hey, you know, um, it's exciting. There was a time, there was a time where we just won everything in this company. So like, let's, mm. let's bring it back, baby. Like no just more systems, forget systems and routines, throw them out the window. We're just here's winging it. Just going. When Ray sure. wants to do something, <laughs> she just does it. Guys, it's a free course. I don't even think I got that approved, but I've decided it's a free course. <laughs> And I just need somebody to not tell Andrea because she's the one I say, that she's, like, she's the runs. She like runs our academy and like technically would have had to give me like twelve stamps of approval on like the things I did. So I'm oh, thinking about like buying. So her... telling Andrea. No, I'm thinking about like going to buy her a cookie first and then be like, "Hey, also, I'm publishing a course next week." <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Andrew probably won't mind because like she's also the one who normally has to like assign all the tasks and follow up on it. So she'll just be able to check a whole bunch off, hopefully. Yeah, and no, none of that. Good. Well, that's exciting. So all right. Well, keep your eye out at teachbetteracademy.com for that. Yeah, and friends Coming soon. When we create courses on like brand new content, we don't have like set workshops on. It's a it's a little bit more of a process. But if you guys want any courses this year, we're kind of gonna do courses where you guys just tell us what yes. you're looking for and then we'll find the right person in the team to to do the creation Good. and the implementation uh especially with the membership that's nine dollars a month or wait it's january if you do the academy membership right now it's not like 450 450 a month forever yeah, just to confirm that's not 450 it's four dollars and fifty four dollars and fifty cents a month yes. a month yes anywho then you get every course um including the full full workshop stuff but I do eventually want to do a standard based grading full workshop because the only thing that missed that I really, really, really wanted to put in this course that I definitely was going to get in trouble. With, so I didn't, um, is we have that huge database of standard based grading templates that is only for our workshop like schools. And it has like every template, every activity, everything in it. And I just, that can't be shared in the intro. So I think I need to do a workshop strictly so they get access to that awesome website. Is my opinion. sounds like a plan. Sounds like sounds like you got next week and figured out. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we should transition because I'm totally off we topic. Should. But we should guys, transition. Just DM us and let us know like what you're curious about, or even if it's a small topic in your mind, like what do you wish you could do better? Formative mm. assessments, in my opinion, are like a perfect one because we're all doing them every day. But maybe there's a way you could do it more effectively. And I've we I've been doing that presentation a bunch recently too so we'll throw that one up i think that one should be free too jeff just fyi sounds, sure sounds good okay cool we'll be back Welcome back to Teach Better Today Morning Show. Thank you for sticking with us, even through the shenanigans. 
Jeff and I are here and we are jumping into our team talk section, which is an episode norm. Every single episode, we have a little section of our show where we like to talk about education. From my understanding, we're doing a listener question today, aren't we, Jeff? Yes, I have a listener question that I want to throw at you if that's okay. Okay, but I had one okay. selected too, so you're just going to monopolize the conversation? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So okay. like, okay, yes. So before I say that, if, you, if you're watching or listening over on the, the podcast, you can share and reach out at any time. Just email us. We're all just our names at teachbetter.com. So like Jeff at teachbetter.com, Ray at teachbetter.com, or get us on social media and just ping us and let us know if you have a question that you want us to chat about or an idea or whatever. This is a question, and I thought this made sense. What is your hand up for? I hate you. I prefer Instagram direct messages or Facebook okay. direct messages. DM Ray then. I just want on no. If you email her, she's probably never going to read it. No, I will. Just it will be like a few weeks later because I currently a few have. Weeks later. I currently have five thousand nine hundred and twenty-two emails in my. Email. Oh my gosh, Chad and Katie are like throwing up right now. I know. Um, my favorite is to tell Brad Hughes that Brad Hughes like would rather nuts. roll over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. This is a user question. Um, what is the best way to teach writing to children who hate writing? Ooh, writing. That was one of my favorite subjects to teach. I know that you taught writing. I did. And it was never my goal to be a writing teacher I, at all. Like I, I didn't even want to get the endorsement to teach uh, secondary writing. But it ended up being one of my favorite things I taught. And even though I consider myself a math teacher at heart, um, I actually think if it was like gun to my head, which one did I have more fun with? It was writing for sure. Really? Yes. Yes. Because writing to me, maybe I should clarify, I did not like teaching writing at all without the grid method. The grid method was my structure I needed to enjoy writing, teaching writing. And I think it's because writing can feel, teaching writing can feel so heavy on grading and feedback um, mm -hmm. because it's not like a, like math, it's either right or it's wrong. And you can only give feedback on so much versus writing. It feels like no matter what you're evaluating, you're opening the can of worms. And the grid method to me would, would kind of be the answer to this question because I needed a structure that took me out of just the content delivery system mm -hmm. and allowed me to facilitate, which is the fun part of writing. Like having a student be creative in front of you and be vulnerable and share in what's going on in their mind. And then having the time, it's really just the time, the time to sit with that student and be a part of that process to me is the beauty of loving being a writing teacher. But I found that without without the structure, without the grid, um, I was just a paper pusher. Like I was constantly bringing home essays that I knew I couldn't possibly read fast enough to give feedback that was valuable. Mm -hmm. um, and I, to be honest, I, okay, this is terrible because I, I hope there's like, what is it called when there's a time where you can't charge me with a what's it called when it, when there's like a period of time where you can charge me with, with, with murder, but afterwards uh, you statute can't of limitations. Yeah. Statue of limitations. I hope that exists for, for me right now, but I, as a writing teacher early on would honestly throw out so many writing pieces and not read them because I didn't have the time like mm. constantly Be because it was so overwhelming to see this like stack of paper. So if you are in a writing role, and you have students who are resistant, which is just life, right? We have students that are mm -hmm. resistant in every subject area. I think the grid is not only the right piece or solution for you, but also for them as a student. Because the biggest win in getting a resistant student to work on something that they don't enjoy is to break that up into small, small, teeny, teeny, tiny chunks and get really positive, valuable feedback frequently and often throughout the time of learning. So if you are in a writing role, sorry to blab on, here's kind of the basics of how you can do it. Um, I used to do two different grids. Uh, one would be to learn the writing style and the other grid would be to create their own example of that writing piece. Um, for those of you, for example, that do argumentative essays or something, Learning an argumentative essay, using those mentor texts, that's great in a grid structure. So they're really mastering those small skills. 
uh, piece by piece, getting getting your celebration every single day, one on one or in small groups from you getting that contact, big celebration, and then open up another grid that walks them simply walks them through the writing process. It's perfect for the workshop model. You're able to pull in those mentor texts again. They've already seen they're, they're giving you teeny tiny chunks and getting teeny tiny moments of feedback from you on a consistent basis. And then essentially when the essay is done, like at the end of level three, and they're turning in a piece of work to kind of prove their, their mastery understanding, you've actually had so many opportunities to see it. You're just doing that last final check. Like you've read it in parts and pieces and approve their outline in such small little doses that um, I just really like found a love for being able to see that final piece and not being overwhelmed. And then level four, I throw in all that peer editing fun stuff. But so, so breaking up and organizing within a, a good method allowed you one to give them more of that, that quick, constant, positive reinforcement and feedback. Um, it also probably made it feel a little easier to them because they're doing bits and pieces instead of this long essay or just long whatever. Um, but then also at the end allows you to not have to sit with a stack of full on essays. You're just finalizing the stuff because you already know it at that point. You've Completely. already had an interaction with it. You're you're able to have the feedback and a conversation with them when they're still in the mental state of what they were just writing versus when they've worked on it for how many days or whatever. So I yeah, and I love I've, it. And we've and we've I've seen this before, like I've essentially like pre-graded everything because I've seen it two, three times already because the grid allowed me to like do those conferencing mm -hmm. moments. But then at the end, I used to, right before they turned it in, like have them highlight specific things in certain colors so I knew exactly where to look. But in the end, I knew the students, I knew what part they were struggling with and that was the only part I really focused on. So I could get one essay, I'm using the same rubric, but one essay from a student that's like, oh, I knew they really needed to work on descriptive detail in the most recent conference I had with them. That's really all I'm going to focus on. Everything else I've kind of already graded and feel good on. Or, oh, this next student, same essay, same rubric. I knew that they were really struggling with that counterclaim concept. So I'm going to go back and really only look at those pieces because everything else I've already pre-graded. And it just was nice because the students feel like they're moving. Like that's, mm -hmm. I think, some of the struggle with the resistancy of writers is it's so overwhelming and they already feel yes. like they're moving and grooving and you get to be like this is the part I love I love looking a student in the eye and being like you're doing great like celebrate this oh my gosh what a great feeling I hope you feel like are you proud of yourself and it's not just you standing at the front being like here's how to write a counterclaim do it like you know using the workshop model mm -hmm. which is great but I I, I need that one-on-one -on -one contact with students with uh with the writing process for sure Mm, yeah, I love it. And, and, and specific to the the question about students who maybe hate writing, typically it's because it's hard for them. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, and and if you can, when you break it up like that, you're not asking for nearly as much. You're asking for a little bit at a time, and then you're interacting with them really quickly too. Yeah, I love it. And and I and I was saying like, we've heard this uh, from quite a few writing teachers who utilize a good method in very similar connections and stuff like that. So I love that. Well, just breaking that down. Yeah, no. And if you're looking to incorporate more choice, a grid to me also allowed those choices to fall at the most appropriate times humanly possible. And I typically would have a teacher conference right after a student made a specific choice so I could confirm it was the right choice. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they're reviewing those those essential skills at level one. The first box at the top of level two was making some sort of choice on, I don't know, maybe their topic, like what they're writing about. And then it was a teacher conference right then and there. Like, oh my gosh, Jeff, I'm so excited that you chose this as your topic. Tell me about your vision, right? Let's lay mm -hmm. that out. And that way, if it's not quite what you're looking for, you have the autonomy to like tweak it without telling them no. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So mm. I love listener questions, but mm. yeah, good luck with that. Let us know if you need any help. And we've done a lot of writing grid webinars that I'm pretty sure in the Academy. So not to plug that again, but uh, DM me and I can, I can send them to you. I know, I know we've done a bunch of writing ones over the last few years with teachers live, just like drafting grids. So let me know. Mm, I love it. You so know, what's good. interesting is when you talk about the writing stuff is like a lot of times our, our writing teachers and, and ELA teachers and stuff are curious whether the grid works for them. Like that's what Chad's wife does. Right. So like when this thing was created, like, 
those were some of the first things he tested without obviously he was science so that was where he built it at one of the first things he tested with was writing so like it is built for that so for so many of the reasons that you already mentioned so i love it it's awesome so good question too by the way keep those yeah. coming so good. Friends, if you have any listener questions that you want to submit or any questions about the New Year challenge going on that goes all through January or anything else, just direct message us. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Go get that coffee. Tag me and send me a picture of your pretty coffee. And uh, Jeff and I can't wait to see you later this week. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye, guys. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. (laughs) The comments are always so entertaining. (laughs) We'll see you tomorrow. 